Thank you for joining us today. I love that commercial. Uh, did you guys see the one with Jill Scott? You see the one with Leslie Oldham Jr.? You noticing a trend there? It is our pleasure on behalf of Nationwide to serve as the host sponsor of this premier conference, and we've been doing this since 2011. We are not new to the game. Uh, we're a longstanding partner. We share your commitment to entrepreneurship, equipping black innovators with the tools, resources, and connections needed to succeed. In other words, we've got your back. We're helping established entrepreneurs not only achieve your dreams, but we also want you to create legacies, supporting and contributing to overall economic inclusion. Inclusion is the goal, and Nationwide is there. With disruption at the heart of this year's summit, I think back to Black Enterprises founder, the late Earl Graves Sr., who challenged the status quo more than 50 years ago. He created a vehicle of information speaking directly to the black community, and we support that. Today, entrepreneurs and business owners are not only driving change, but they're living into the culture that shaped this change. What does this look like? This morning, Nationwide will present a session called Receipts Don't Lie. Culture is big business. That's right, that's right. And I think you'll enjoy it. Thought leader, investor, CEO of PMM Agency, and my friend, Kim Blackwell, she's gonna moderate a conversation with some very special guests, talking about how culturally influenced personal brands led to partnerships with corporate America. You don't wanna miss it. I hope you enjoy what promises to be a very special discussion. As you check out the rest of what the summit has to offer, I also encourage you to stop by Nationwide's On Your Side Business Connection Hub. That's going to be in a business center right here in a hotel. We wanna partner with you. While you're there, you can meet with sub subject matter experts, people from other black owned businesses to help you grow yours. Thank you for your time this morning. Enjoy the conference and remember, Nationwide is on your side. Thank you, Ramon, and Nationwide for your valued partnership and commitment to this Disruptor Summit. One final point. We don't expect this conference to be a passive exercise where you sit back and just receive content. We've designed this program to be immersive. We want, in fact, we require your engagement and participation. If you arrived here with any feelings of uncertainty about your business, your career, or your next steps, we want you to leave with renewed confidence that you've got this. You'll emerge from this summit equipped with new tools, expertise, and renewed energy. More importantly, you will leave here strongly connected to a greater community of like-minded disruptors. Communities, black entrepreneurs, innovators, investors, and creators who serve as a constant source of inspiration. So let's get to it, everybody. Please welcome back Mr. Shannon Lanier. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Give it up for Butch, everybody. Uh, I think I want to be out here in the crowd with y'all today. I want to be amongst the peoples, you know what I mean? And I may shout some of y'all out. I better not see anybody falling asleep. I'm like, bro, wake up. No, don't worry, I got you. But I want to be out here because I want to make sure that we're mingling, asking some questions, making sure you guys are engaged. And also, speaking about being engaged, we are going to have some amazing opportunities for you all. I want to make sure you guys stop by the business lounge, okay? It's out there in the hall during the break. Go out there because we are going to have experts on hand to talk to you guys. We have an Ask the Expert workshop out there. So you can sit there and ask them questions. You may be too embarrassed to ask somebody else or you just don't know an expert they can handle that. We got them here for you. And they have real estate experts, business experts, tax experts, because I know some of y'all doing y'all taxes wrong, okay? We don't want y'all to end up like Wesley Snipes. We got y'all. We got, we're going to take care of y'all. I'm just saying. But make sure y'all make sure to keep the business going. You see what I'm saying? And some of y'all leaving a lot of money on the table. You don't believe how much money some businesses leave on the table because you're not writing off certain things. My kids, 
are part of my business because I may put everybody to work and I get a nice little refund for them and all the work they do. So I'm just saying there's a lot of opportunities you need to speak to the tax experts about out there. And they're going to be out there to about 315. So talk to them. And while you're out there, also, we have one-on-ones with business coaches, so you can talk to some of the business coaches that are out there, and they'll be able to help you with that and take your business to the next level. All right? Oh, I know y'all always hungry like me, so I'm going to make sure y'all know we got some black-owned food trucks out here today. Give it up for them. That's right. We're supporting the black-owned food trucks, and that's how we do it, Black Enterprise. They're going to be outside from 12 to 4 o'clock, so make sure you go out there and support them. And speaking of being hungry, it's time for our first panel. Are y'all ready for our first panel? All right, I like that. Well, without further ado, it is time to bring to the stage a person who can really talk about building a $100 million business. I didn't say $1 million business. No, sir. $100 million business. She is the founder of Slutty Vegan. That's right. Pinky Cole is in the building making veganism sexy. That's right. With her $100 million food empire. Please welcome to the stage, Miss Asia Pinky Cole. I love going there because I've been married for 19 years, so it's the only time I can get a one-night stand, but it's a hamburger. So, you know, get it in while you can. She's making veganism sexy, everybody. And she's joined by the moderator for the day. We have Deputy the Digital Editor for Black Enterprise, Selena Hill. Hold on, hold on. I said good morning, Atlanta. Good morning. There we go. That's the energy we need to start this day off right. Now, before we start, Pinky, I want to get a survey of the room. I want to see how many disruptors we have. How many, by, make some noise if you're a creative or an entrepreneur. Make some noise. Yeah. All right, well, oh. wait. Make some noise if you've been a slutty vegan. Okay, all right. Woo! I was about to say, if you live in Atlanta and you ain't been a slutty vegan, we got a problem. <laughs> I've been to a few now. now. Who is ready to launch and scale a dynamic business that can actually change the world? Make some noise. Yeah. Is anybody already running like a six-figure business? Anybody? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Who, who's ready for, okay, okay, Danielle. Who's ready for a seven-figure or even a billion-dollar business? Yeah. Well, you're in the right place because Pinky Cole is going to give us the secret sauce to building a multi-million dollar brand. Pinky, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. I like to be in spaces like this, y'all, by the way. It's Can good. I cuss? I don't cuss a lot, but if, I, if something slip out, forgive me. It's though. good. It's a okay, safe space. Right. Okay, it's a cool. safe space. Be you, girl. <laughs> so for those who don't know, you came up with the idea to build a plant-based burger food truck in 2018. And within five short years, You've opened already 11 brick and mortar locations around the country. Woo! You've. <laughs> that's hard, y'all. That's a real clap. Yeah, no, no, no. that is not easy. <laughs> it's not. You launched historic partnerships with Steve Madden and Shake Shack. Mm -hmm. You launched a sister restaurant and a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And as we said, you scaled Slutty Vegan to a whopping $100 million. But get this, y'all. The most impressive thing is that she did all this while having two children. Okay? Back to back. Back to back. I've been in the kitchen. <laughs> so Pinky, tell us what moved you to create a disruptive brand that has since become the face of fast food, vegan food? So let me tell y'all something about disruption, right? So like people raised their hands and said that they were disruptors. But if you want to be a disruptor, it didn't just come overnight, right? Like I was the kid that said, when I grow up, I'm going to make it. Like, I ain't gonna live a regular life. Like, I'm gonna be a star. I didn't know what I was talking about. But I knew that I was manifesting something very big in my life mm -hmm. to be able to identify that I was gonna be great and make an impact. So all of my life, I've been a hustler. Like, I was selling food, I was selling candy. Like, I was doing everything that I could do, not realizing that I was molding myself to be the person that the world now knows and loves today. So I graduated from college. Shout out to Clark Atlanta University. And you see, okay, all right. Woo -woo. Um, and after I graduated, I went to um, L.A. I wanted to be an actress. 
and I ain't had no money. I had a duffel bag, a suitcase, and a Bible, and 30 resumes woo, that my mother gave me. I was being a disruptor. And I didn't have no plan, but the plan was already written for me. So when I went to LA, I became a background actor, became SAG, and I had no idea I was gonna be in, in behind the scenes. And I got really, really good at TV. And while I was working in TV, I got a call from a show in New York, worked there for two years. Got a call from a show, The Maury Show, worked there for two years as a producer. And it propelled me to want to open up a restaurant, and I didn't have any idea on what I was doing to open up a restaurant. So when I opened it, I'm like, okay, I got a line down the block, and I'm selling jerk chicken, but I ain't eating jerk chicken. <laughs> so I wasn't in alignment, but I was still being a disruptor. And after two years, that restaurant caught on fire, and I lost everything, okay? I lost my car, I got evicted out my apartment, relationship, everything, and at the same time, y'all, I got an opportunity to work on a show called Iyanla Fix My Life. Mm, that's my show too. And, and that's a great show. So while I was on that show, they asked me to come back to Atlanta to work. And while I was in Atlanta, I was sitting in my bedroom, and I'm gonna be honest with y'all, because we friends, right, we family? So I was smoking some medicinal marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And while I was there, Slutty Vegan just came out of nowhere. Mm. Like a light bulb. Let me tell you something about the thing that is for you, mm. right? It's not going to take forever to figure it out. It's just going to come out of nowhere. But that was God talking to me. So when the idea came, I'm like, this is it. And I started doing my research. I went to YouTube. I went to Google. I started learning everything that I could learn about business. And it was only because I wanted some vegan comfort food on a late night. And all my favorite restaurants in Atlanta closed early. And it went from having a ghost kitchen to having food trucks to, like you said, 11 going on 20 restaurants to being on the covers of some of the biggest magazines, places that I've only dreamed about as a kid. Including Black Enterprise in Including February. Black Enterprise. Enterprise. Okay. So, Including Black Enterprise. So the idea of the disruption came from early on mm. because I've really been creating this path forward for my life for a very, very long time. Before we, we, we talk about, you know, just, just some of the, the notes and bolts of how you, you know, build this business, scale this business, this is a disruptor summit. The question I have for you, Pinky, because I, I know how your mind works. It's a brilliant mind. Thank you. Is disruptive thinking something that can be developed or is it something that people are born with? How, how do you get into a space to say, I want to build the next Uber. I want to build the next Airbnb. I want to build the next slutty vegan. How does that work? Let me tell you what I learned. I learned that everybody has the ability to have that potential. You just got to know how to unlock that potential. And how do you unlock that potential? You got to surround yourself by the right people. You got to be in a household that's going to foster you and encourage you and give you the knowledge and information. You got to be around dreamers mm. because it ain't enough to be around people that just want to sit around all day and watch you dream. Okay? You got to be around people that want to grow and build with you. We all got the gift. Being a disruptor is the gift. That's our calling. It's our purpose. It's the ability to fulfill God's purpose. And, and I, don't, I don't mean to be that person, but it is what it is, mm -hmm. right? And when you unlock that potential, everything that you dream about and pray about, that thing that makes your belly leap every single day. And I know it ain't just me. You ever had that one business, you can't stop thinking about it. You're like, all right, I'm gonna go get a job. And then to come back to you, you wanna do it again. All right, I'm gonna do something else. And that thing keeps coming back to you. That is the thing that the universe is aligning you to do. But you got to be able to unlock that potential. And once you unlock that potential, you only get that one chance. Mm. Slutty Vegan was my one chance. And I said, God, you want to give me this chance? Guess what I did with that chance? Movies, media, entertainment, everything. It wasn't just burgers and fries. Mm. That was the vessel to get me to where I needed to be. But the minute that I unlocked that potential, everything started to unfold for me. So once you unlock it, you gotta hit the ground running because once you take the first step, you are already halfway there. If anybody has been inside of a slutty vegan, you know it is not just a restaurant, it is an nope. experience. How many of y'all been sluttified? Make some noise. Okay, good. Pinky, you are a, a marketing genius, right? And, and you talked about you know your background on the Maury show and uh, Yolanda and it's like, when you created this brand, it wasn't just to be an average business. You wanted it to be bigger, better. Where was that inspiration? How were you able to actually execute that? Because I'm a grizzly bear. 
<laughs> Simply put, like everything that I do ain't no 50% about me. Mm. And that's the same thought process that you should have about yourselves and your business and the people that you're around. I want to do everything at a thousand, mm. right? Because if I show up as a thousand, I know that if something don't work, it wasn't meant for me to work. You know, I'm like, it wasn't meant for it to work. So when I think about Slutty Vegan and making it grow, I knew that people no longer just buy products, right? We are in the storytelling business. You got to be able to identify what your story is. I talk to people all the time. I'm like, all right, what you want to do? Well, I want to sell to, well, why? Why do you want to sell a product? Why? Tell me about your backstory. Where do you come from? What, what, what did your parents do? Did you grow up in poverty? Like, did you not be able to go to school? Did you lose a family man? And it doesn't have to be a sob story. But what is your story that somebody will be able to identify and say, you know what, I recognize myself in them. And that's what I've been able to do with Slutty Vegan. I'm helping people to reimagine food, mm. even if it comes at vegan burgers and fries, right? I'm not telling you to eat vegan comfort food every day. What I'm telling you to do is to have options. And everybody can identify with having options, correct? Yes. And because of that, I'm showing them a really good experience. And after you have the re really good experience, then you eat a plant-based burger and you're just so pleasantly surprised that it's good. It tastes really good. <laughs> Thank you. It tastes really and, good. And that level of marketing and storytelling has allowed people to be so invested in a brand beyond the product. And as I brand build, I realize that if you get people to believe in you and the idea of your story, they gonna buy whatever you're selling. You ain't even gotta advertise that. I don't show my food online, rarely. Mm. I sell products and I rarely show my food online. I don't talk about veganism online because that's not the brand that I'm building. I'm building a lifestyle brand. I like to say Slutty Vegan is a marketing brand that so happens to sell food. And as long as I keep that authentic approach, people are going to come back again and again. Um, I like how you said about turning your pain into purpose, right? Especially as a business owner. And Pinky, I know when you and I spoke before, you said you didn't want to be the face of Slutty Vegan. You wanted to be behind the brand. And I was like, what, like, you know, because I feel like most of us are so invested in you as a young black woman who is doing something that a lot of us wouldn't even imagine in four to five short years. Why do you think it's important for the entrepreneurs, the creatives in this room to also take that approach and get in front of their brand? How do you make that decision? That's a really good question. Did y'all understand what she said? Yeah. Okay, so I did not want to be the face of Slutty Vegan, right? Like, I'm like, do not put me on the page. I would get mad at my employees if they put me on the page. Cause I'm like, it's not about me. I want the business to have an identity of its own. But we just did a brand equity study. If you have a business, make sure that you do a brand equity study on your business. It'll tell you who's watching, what they like, why they like you, why they don't like you, what you need to do differently. And when we did that, you know what they said? They said 65% of people who come to Slutty Vegan come because of me. That's and I said, well, goddamn. <laughs> And I said, so now I got to get on the page. <laughs> so when I started getting more on the page, I started to really see a shift because what it is is, y'all remember when Obama won the presidency, right? Even if you didn't vote for Obama, like at the time, I didn't really know enough about politics. I just saw a black man that just won and I'm like, yes, we made it, right? right? It just felt good. So Slutty Vegan and the movement is similar to that, to see a young black woman from East Baltimore, mm. right? My parents are, Immigrant, well, former immigrants. My father did 22 years in prison, right? I didn't have a silver spoon. I didn't have no trust fund. I'm the youngest of four kids. So to be able to build a $100 million brand mm -hmm. off the bootstraps, right? Yes. To be yes. able to do that in the most humble way. Yes. And not only just that, to be able to have a foundation that really pours back in the community, because it ain't enough to just make money. We can make money, anybody can make money. Yep. But what are you gonna do with the money? Are you fostering it, building an ecosystem with the people around you, helping the communities that you serve? So to be able to do that, why wouldn't you be proud of that? So people have been so proud of that, and they want to connect to that, because they like, damn, like if Pinky Cole can do it, the girl who's brown skin, who got locks, who a little thick, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> right? If, if Pinky Cole can do it, yes. then I can do it. I can do and it. people started to believe more. And I like to say that the whole slutty vegan movement, there's more entrepreneurs than there's ever been, Yes. right? There's more people that believe in themselves more than they've ever been. And I mean, obviously that's a part of COVID as well, but the fact that people have this level of independence they see independence and they're proud of that. They do. Not only you know, have you built this $100 million brand, but you have over 350 employees. It's like 450 now. Woo, 450 now. Right, okay. But can we get real? Can I, can I have a real conversation with y'all? 
How, how many people in here are actually scaling a business? I'm talking about like you have, okay, all right, I'm talking to y'all. Everybody else step outside for a second. All right, <laughs> so I'll, I'll be totally transparent because I can only be real. So I'm, I'm gonna give y'all the timeline. So I got a nine page spread in the New Yorker. I'm like, oh, I made it. I'm in the New Yorker, yes. Y'all know what the New Yorker is, yes. right? Like mm -hmm. if you get in the New Yorker, that's a big deal. That is. A nine page profile in the New Yorker. The next day, I was on the cover of Jet Magazine. The very next day, I came on after the Golden Globes on 11 o'clock news because I was getting sued for unpaid wages. Mm. I'm being real, people don't talk mm. about this part, right? So let me tell you what I realized. Scaling is cool, like it's cool to say I got 11 locations, but imagine having 450 employees, right? Mm. And making sure that you're serving all of their needs and some people are gonna slip through the cracks and we might not always get it right, but we do the best that we can. And you building your, you're building your reputation and scaling a business and growing and doing all of these things. And then you start to get hit with the monkey wrenches. And then you start to question yourself, do I still wanna do this? Cause I didn't do this to make no money. Like this is a passion project for me. You know, when that happened to me for about two weeks, I was just in a funk. And I'm usually the person that's on the shoulder for everybody. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, wait, this ain't what I built. This ain't my character. This ain't my integrity. So I'm telling y'all this in total transparency that when you are scaling a disruptive business, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. you got to understand that there is going to be some great, some good, and some bad. But it's all a part of the process. Because guess what it did? My, my policy in life is this. When shit happens, we put policy in place. Right? So now I got zip tight. I'm talking about like what? HR, what? You good? I'm hugging everybody. I'm like, there is no problems. We have no issues. Like, we're, we're doing wellness checks every day, all day. Like, just making sure, because guess what? We're more of a target than we've ever been before. So, hopefully, that helps somebody. That is. Because scaling is not a game. It is. <laughs> to, to your point, Pinky, the more, prop, the more money you have, the more problems you have. Yes. And, you know, you're being impressed from the, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And you, this year, it feels like you've been getting the negative press, um, the lawsuits in Atlanta and in Brooklyn. Um, you said it forced you to tighten up. How else has it changed your perspective as a businesswoman? So another transparent moment, like I'm very familial, right? So I'm like, y'all are my family. This is a family. But ain't no family in business. Mm, that part. I mean, I, I, that part. Like, I got to be honest. Nobody really wants to say that, right? Because you can have people that you can trust, obviously, with, with all that you see, right? We've, we've done the right thing and we practice best practices, right, as best as we could. But you realize, I got a company that's doing extremely well and, you know, th th things happen in business. I mean, this is not, this is normal, right? Like, all businesses have issues. Like, companies, all you got to do is go downtown and you can file a suit. I'm not saying that it's okay. Right. But it happens to businesses that are scaling. So it really just made me understand that there are no friends in business. There are no family in business. I made the big mistake of hiring family in business. I'll never do that again. And I love my family. Um, but it also just told me that you want to grow a multi-million dollar company, you got to move like a multi-million dollar company. You got to move like a corporate entity. You got to move like the big conglomerates move and, and be very clean in your approach and everything you do. Luckily, I have an all-star legal team. Mm. Luckily, I have an all-star accounting team that protects us every step of the way because I'm moving into the billion dollar space, mm. okay? Mm. Which is why the things are happening. Let me tell you something, y'all. Oh, I just got a message. When you start to go to the next level, right? There are certain things, that's tests from God mm. that start to come into the way, right? To show you like, are you prepared for this? I'm gonna put the armor on you, but before I put that armor on you, I gotta make sure that you're ready. But when you stay ready, you ain't never gotta get ready, mm. okay? So I've been ready and I'm excited to continue to scale this business and continue to make this brand a billion dollar company that I know that it will be. And let's talk yes. about that because last year you announced that you raised $25 million, which is how you got to the valuation of 100 million. Mm -hmm. How are you getting Slutty Vegan to a billion dollar? That's something that there's a handful of black billionaires in America. How are, how are you planning that? How do you get to that level? So it's not just restaurants. Anybody in the CPG world? Okay, um, so CPG retail, obviously, um, we have our dips in 1,400 targets. Um, we got a couple other SKUs that we're gonna be putting in stores. I got my books in Target, um, and we're working on more products. Here's a word of advice for people that are in that space. It cost me $850,000 to build one slutty vegan, and mm. that's on a good day. 
right? Because supply chain and everything that's happening. And I'm being transparent because I want you to know that that's a lot of money. Yes, that is. And then once you pay that money, you got to pay maintenance. Then you got to pay employees. Right? Then you got to make sure that if something goes wrong, oh, you got to take care of it. Like if the lights go off, my Jonesboro store has been closed for two days because of Georgia Power. So I lost a lot of money. Right? So the easier thing to do as I realize as I grow and scale business is get into the consumer um, packaged goods. Mm. Right? Like if you know how to cook and you got a really good product, Find a co-packer, package it up, put it in the freezer aisle, and now you're in stores and you can use your marketing dollars to promote it, right? Get a cloud kitchen if you're a restaurant. Like if you, ha if you have a good product, if you have a shampoo or something, whatever it is, get a co-packer and put your stuff in retail markets. And I can guarantee you, you see the difference. Is it still expensive? Yeah, but it's not nearly as expensive as doing a brick and mortar that's gonna cost you a whole lot of money. That's the blueprint. Yeah. That's the blueprint right there. In today's day and age, I don't know if we talked about it, but I feel like everybody wants to be an entrepreneur, everybody wants to be a founder, mm -hmm. but it's only a handful that make it to the level of slutty vegan. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's essential for anyone who's starting a business today to have a disruptive model or disruptive thinking? Yes, boring businesses do not win. <laughs> it's just the truth. It's just, a, I got like two claps, but I'm telling you, it's the truth. And, and when I say boring, I'm not talking about like, we know when I say boring, I, I'm really talking about marketing, right? Yes. We live in a day and age where if you don't get the message across in seven seconds, they're not paying attention. So you got to be able to figure out how can you touch your people in a way that you reel them in in the first seven seconds and get them cued in and excited, something that they care about, something that's gonna make them like, damn, I need to be a part of this. And there's something called FOMO. Y'all know what that is? Fear of missing out. When I first started Slutty Vegan, I used to post the address three hours before and I would sell out whenever we were ready to sell out, right? But guess what happened? There was a fear of people missing out on getting a really good burger and being a part of the line. So I created this movement of scarcity mm. that people wanted to have it. And when people want to have something that they can't readily have, they like, I need more of it. Now, obviously, you got to make sure that you manage your demand. But when you talk about boring businesses, have something that's so disruptive, people are like, I need it. Like, I got to have it. Like, for example, and I'm specifically talking about food, like if you sell cheese cheesecakes for a living, right? Make a cheesecake that got like so many crazy toppings on it, right? Like it's colorful, it got everything, it got the frills and everything. Now maybe everybody won't buy that every day, but you put it on social media, it goes viral. Y'all remember that fried chicken ice cream? Yes. The fried chicken ice cream, that red big ass boot. Y'all remember the boot yes. that everybody was talking about? Right? I, I, I would never, like, I'm like, okay, that's correct. But guess what? It made me pay attention. It did. To a big red boot. Yep. It made me pay attention to fried ice cream. But creating disruptive businesses will have investors paying attention. It'll have your audience paying more attention. And then you tie it in to the philanthropic movement. Because I believe that in order to have a successful company, you also have to have a philanthropic element to your business. I'm not saying you got to give all your money away to the community, but karma makes the world go round yes, okay so when you do good you will get good and that is the real disruption if you want to talk about being a disruptive business amazing yes i know we're going to take a few questions from the audience i know we want to take a few questions if you have a question please let our staff know we're going to start to get the questions get the questions in your mind ready while we let them get some questions another thing that you have uh done really well hinky is you have the coach on your side Cultural capital. And we I talked actually, about that before. We did, because I said, is that something that could be taught? Is that, can you do a workshop on that? How do you get culture on your side? Because I feel like once you have the culture on your side, you have so much influence, power. Like, we move, you know, we move everything. We move business. We make businesses profitable. How do you do that? You know, what I realized is um, when I started to elevate in my career, instead of finding people above to do the things that I needed to do. I went to Instagram. Like, I'm getting married, y'all, in 10 days. Right? I'm about to be somebody's wife. Um, but 90% of the people um, that I found for my wedding, I found on Instagram. So, I saw you, you kept posting. You were like, you need someone yeah. to cook. You need a photographer, a DJ. But I'm very intentional in doing that because that could be somebody's opportunity of a lifetime 
to propel them to the next level to be able to grow their business. Everybody that I have ever used and designated and posted, their business went all through the roof. Mm. So that tells me what the formula is. Each one teach one, right? Like if, if I help you win, then you can help somebody else win, then they can help somebody else win, and then we can all win together, right? And that's how you build cultural capital. I laugh, I'm like, I ain't got a billion in the bank yet. But when you talk about that cultural currency, Move over, Bill Gates. My name is Pinky Cole, right? Like, I got, you understand what I'm saying? Like, because I know that when you help to use your resources to help other people win, then we all can collectively win together. And that is not cliche. So, so that's, that cultural capital is real. And I think that everybody has the ability to do it. It's just really releasing that crab in a barrel mentality and bring everybody up. God already got my win, I'm already winning. So why not help other people win? And that's how I've been. You yeah, know, you've always been like that. Always. So we do have some questions from the audience. Please state just your name and get to the question so that we can get as many as possible in. Thank you so much. Go ahead. Oh. I'm Kia, I love you. So my thing is, you do so much. Mom, getting ready to be a wife, balance. How do you find it? <laughs> it it's very hard, oh, I'm sorry. You coming for me? Oops, let me trouble. Okay, so let me tell, tell you, it's, it's, it's very hard, but it's doable. I told you I ain't gonna lie to y'all, right? So I'm still going through, my, so I got a 10 month old and a 22 month old, y'all. Don't ask me how I'm doing. Sometimes I go in the shower and I get my little tears and I get it together and then I come back. Um, because kids are hard. They're, where you go? I was just looking at you. Okay, are right, you staying right, right there? there. Uh, <laughs> um, kids are very difficult, um, but, but so worth it. And when I say difficult, like, especially two kids that are walking at the same time and crying and they both want mommy and they want me to pick them up. I'm like, y'all are heavy. Um, but what helps me is that my partner, my husband-to-be, um, he's also in the restaurant industry. So I don't ever have to turn it off for him because we speak the same language. Talking business is our love language. Are you in a relationship with somebody in business? Anybody here? Right? Don't it feel so good? It's like, it's sexy to talk about cost of goods. <laughs> okay? Like, we are talking about labor and, like, wages and hiring and stuff. And I'm like, oh, you look so cute when you talk about that. <laughs> like, so it never feels like work. And the minute it feels like work for me, then I'm out. I never wanted to work a corporate job. I never wanted to sit behind a desk because that ain't my vibe, my energy. I'm wild and crazy. I'm a hot girl. So I need to be able to move around. And now that I got kids, I'm like, I'm a hot mama, right? <laughs> So I want to be able to be that person that could be everything to my husband um, and everything for my kids. We got a village. And coming from a Caribbean family, my village is my mother, my aunts, his family. So we got people that help us with the children so that we can go off and be great because they understand the sacrifice and they believe in me. And as long as you got people around you that believe in you, you don't have to compromise balance because you got people helping you to do all the things that you want to do. There you go. Thank, Thank you for you. that. Next yes. question, please. Yes, my name is Otis from Detroit. Uh, hey. Congratulations on your expansion. Thank you. Uh, with 450 staff, uh, how do you sustain keeping them in turnover rate and then those staff that you know just is not good for your business? Hard. It's hard, again. Um, and I think that's um, across the, the, the industry, right? Anybody have restaurants in here? Okay, so it's like one of us, three of us. Okay, all right. Um, <laughs> across the industry, it's very difficult because we live in a day and age now where people don't have to work. You really, it's so easy to be an entrepreneur with the TikTok world and everything. Like, you literally can do the things that you want to do. So what we've decided to do, we started learning that in order to retain more employees, we got to start incentivizing them. Mm -hmm. We got to make them feel like they're a part of the bigger picture. And a bigger picture is, what is your growth plan? Like, you come here as a crew member, but what does it look like for you five years down the line? And what we realize is when people know what they have to look forward to, then they're more committed. They know that they can get incentivized. And, and when I talk about incentivization, I'm talking about, like, they have the ability to get insurance working at Slutty Vegan. If you work at least 40 hours, you get full benefits, which most restaurants do not do, right? We raised our minimum wage. Um, we raised the salary for GM so that they can have a sustainable living. Did we always do that? Absolutely not. We like, all right, we're just gonna get these stores open. We got all these people. But we realized that the internal customer, which is the employee, is just as important as the external customer. 
Yes, right? It is. So you can't take care of the external customer and not take care of the internal customer because then it doesn't balance out well. Um, so we've, we've just been incentivizing the employees and just making Slutty Vegan the Google of restaurants. And when people feel like this is the place that I can grow a career in, then they'll stay more. And, and your employees are different. You feature them in the ads for Steve Madden when you partner with them. You Their put talent. You put them on the cover of Black Enterprise with you. Mm -hmm. And if, again, if you guys ever walked into Slutty Vegan, it's, they turn up. They turn it into a party. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, you can feel the fact that they want to be there. Yeah. And you're saying that that's intentional. I don't look at them as employees. Mm -hmm. Like, they are talent. Like, we want to foster their gifts. Every, every person that you see on a Slutty Vegan social media page are employees. If they sing, if they dance, if they have a talent. Because guess what? It's going to take that one person to say, hey, can I get the contact information for that employee who did this? I want to put them in my music video. I want to put them in my movie. So we intentionally do that to give them the opportunity. That's yeah. amazing. Question, please. Hi, how you doing? I'm sorry, Hi. a little nervous. <laughs> but just like you, um, I have a question that just like you stated, you scale, you know, as far as your wedding, you actually looked on Instagram to find everybody, correct? So how would you merge hospitality into technology? I have a company called My Concierge. It's an app that actually brings hospitality and um, technology together so you can book like your services, photography and music, I'm sorry, for photography, hair, makeup, all on that app. So from a marketing standpoint, how would I try to market that to gain more clientele? Okay, so let me, let me ask some more questions. So basically you have like the Uber for like services? Yes, ma'am, and unlike Thumbtack or Angie's List, there's no referral fee. So everything will be free at the end. We, of course, we charge our service fee, but it's built on the customer paying and not the small business. So it allows the small business to grow. Got it. And what's the name of it? My concierge. I have a, a scan card if you want to look at it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. She said she shoot her shot, ready. right? She said shoot her shot. Stay ready. So, I love Stay that. Stay ready. Okay, tell me. I, I didn't hear the name. Tell me the name again. It's My Concierge Service. For the app? Yes, ma'am. Okay, don't right get now. mad at me, but I don't like the name. Okay, that's okay. Okay, um, and, and, and if you keep the name, fine. If you keep the name, fine. But when we talk about disruption, mm -hmm. when you think of Uber, Lyft, you, you think of DoorDash, like names, think of a, like a clean name that doesn't, like it sounds like tech, it sounds big, right? Mm -hmm. and, and we live in a world where people like really simple things. So try to think of a name that speaks to what you're selling, but that's very simple, number one. Mm -hmm. And number two, what I would do is, I would tag on the philanthropic arm first, right? You start there, because you got a company, it's like the Uber for services. What I would do is I would create an incubator, right? Create your nonprofit organization. You create an incubator where you help small businesses be able to like, if, if it's a hairstylist and she wants a hair salon, your small business finds funding to get her to create a hair salon. Mm -hmm. You get you a publicist, talk about the fact that you help these local small businesses be able to build up and sustain a business when they come from either an inner city community or a place where they didn't have the resources and now they have thriving businesses mm -hmm. and you're doing that through your platform mm -hmm. and as a result of that, people will start talking about what you're doing on the philanthropic element mm -hmm. and then you start to build data and information because you build this database about coming soon mm -hmm. and then when you got your coming soon you got all the phone numbers all the emails and then you build the app you announce your app and then your marketing mm -hmm. right you all your billboards should have somebody y'all remember um what's the commercials back in the day it used to be something miracle where the hair used to be messed up um grow the what's the commercial back miracle in the day like, like that? was it dr miracles it was like in the 90s mm -hmm. when the hair used to be a mess like, you, your billboards around the city need to be somebody with a jacked up hairline. Mm -hmm. And be like, don't let this be you. Like, go to so-and-so. You know what I'm saying? Or like, with a jacked up whatever it is, like, don't let this be you. Call us. We'll get you right. And like, that is the disruption. So you, you put in something that's real, like, bad that looks like, oh, that look crazy. But then it'll make them want to go to your site. And then you tag on that philanthropic element with the incubator so they know that they're not just coming to a site to find a service. You also have the opportunity to be able to be a part of an incubator that'll help your business grow. Thank there you, you go. You saw all that free game. Yeah. Give it up. Give it up. Pinky. I want to thank you again for sharing the blueprint, all the free game. Thank Please you. let everyone know how they can get a bite of Slutty Vegan, how we can continue to support you, sis, in your journey and tap into all the knowledge and resources that you're, you're sharing with us. Thank you. Um, SluttyVeganATL.com. If you want to follow me on my personal page, um, 
Pinky Cole on social media. Uh, we just did American Sesh here yesterday, so if you know anything about American Sesh, uh, we are about to go on a live tour, okay? So turn on your post notifications, um, and just be everywhere. Thank you guys so much um, for your support, and I pray and wish that every single business in this room will be not a multi-million dollar business, but a billion dollar Woo. business, as long as you are consistent and do the work. Give it up one yeah. more time for Pinky Cole. Thank you. <laughs> Pinky, they want to get a picture of us? Now that's how I'm talking about. That's how you kick off the first panel. We get it done at Black Enterprise. All right, everybody get in their pictures. Everybody